yeah. I'm pretty sorry we didn't introduce you yet. <laughs> Take five. <laughs> G Money, how are you today? What's up, man? You know, another episode, another day. Yes. How was your weekend? Weekend was great. You ready for tonight? Throughout Tuesday tonight, Showtime, Tuesday, man. We man, in there. You know, Teams we made to the world, actually, girl. Um, you know, last week episode we had a uh, um my man, Duh. the love guy. Um, <laughs> love. Nah, how did you feel about that? It was uh another another person who who uh I admire their energy and 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 their and their uh dedication to to their craft. You know what I'm saying? Um, some people make fun of him. In the comments or you know probably his, his his instagram page but i really really truly um admire his confidence his swag his his uh you know his dedication like i said it's just it's just uh some people have talent in the world and they don't really dedicate themselves to it like that you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. it's crazy that he 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 does what he what, what he does and he dedicates himself so it 100 percent like it's not even like he's he's slacking out here he's out here working he's grinding so i respect that you know it, it's definitely a show to watch you know he what has saying? some so, new, he has some new sneakers on some yeah. new kicks on yeah yeah um the outfit's a little crazy i, I can't really yeah i can't really watch i can't that. hang around him too long <laughs> like that it's just, I, I will feel comfortable if it's, it's got a, it's, you know no. <laughs> um shout out to him though man for sure Shout out to our sponsors too. You know, we yeah, can be yeah, right. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a nice Maestro little classics, you know. You know this is a nice little sponsor. situation they got. Maestro's with an S. You know, last time I said Maestro, I had to scratch the whole sponsor and mm. ad, and the guy made sure he texted me and said it's Maestro's, and he gave me a whole speech. And I said, sir, please <laughs> let me come on my own with my own. Thing. Now this is dope though. I haven't worn a snapback in, in like a couple of years, but this is pretty nice. I mean, you need you need one. You need one. You oh, know, your, your hairline be looking a little crazy. You always say that. I'm starting. To, I'm starting to believe you. Nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, we got space goes moving around and touching things. You know, I get a little nervous. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 wait till he you know make sure everything is good on that side. Of space goes. How you doing this week? You all right? I'm good. You sure? Uh, one thing I noticed about you is that you know when we hear private, I be talking to you. You be regular, but when somebody here, you be trying to argue me. So now uh-huh. what I'm gonna do? You see, I be trying to refrain from the old flip. You know, making a grown man try to feel you, you low. You change a lot, man. I'm I be pro- trying. Like, I be watching this I'm nigga, man. You, man. I be trying. Like, I know there's people around, like, pools around. You're like, nigga, I didn't even press nothing. I let that go. Just now, I asked him a nigga about the colors. I remember all that shit. You mm-hmm. had a good memory because when I let it out, I'm going to let it out. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, shout out to uh, uh, Space Ghost, our uh, executive producer. He's definitely putting in work, you know, and um, we here. G Money! Yo. G Money! Yo. Episode motherfucking 35, nigga, nigga we, we made, made it. it. <laughs> but um Man. Today we got a special guest. Special, you know. Talk about it. Two years the last time I seen this guy was two years ago. Mm-hmm. He looks much older. I don't oh. know how. Oh. No. Not that old. Okay, good. You know, you know. He used to battle rap, but he's a rapper. Yes. My man, mm. the great white hope, <laughs> the Larry Bird of rap. Oh, no. oh. My man, so-called. Round of applause uh, for so-called. How you doing, my I'm man? Good. I'm good. I, if if, if I'm the Larry Bird of rap, I'm going to age horribly. That's a man that Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Watch yourself, watch yourself. You see him lately? That dude looks like a sack of skin on top of like a, a wow. half rack or something. Come he's, on, SoCon. Well, Come yeah. on, man. I know he's a legendary yes. a basketball player, but, you know, not aged gracefully. Man. How you doing, man? I'm good. And I'm, I'm glad to be here. You sound like a comedian, man. I'd sound like one? Or, or like, you know, it's, it's like you do voiceovers or something. I wish I did. That would be a lot of money. That'd you, be nice. You, you can do, get to you, it. You got the voice. I would like to. Well, no, but it's very competitive. I'm looking into doing that at some point. It's just, it's super competitive. And you, there, there's a lot of acting on the voice over and voice acting side of things that I don't have experience in. So uh, maybe I could do like a bank commercial or something. Yeah, that's give us, give us an example. I don't know. Uh, I, can't, I, I would never want to be in a bank commercial. Though, <laughs> yeah, well, do, actually, do, a, do a commercial for us. Come on. All right. Uh, For years, I couldn't find anyone to ensure my business oh, shaving and repurposing dog hair. 
Yo. But then State Farm took a shot. I know it. And today, I'm the proud owner of the only Northeastern dog shaving and repurposing firm in all of America. What? State Farm. I don't know. Fuck. I don't, that was amazing, man. What the fuck, my man? What the fuck? I don't know how you did it. That's a weird idea. That was good, man. Hold well, on. I just saw those things I know. Dogs. Shaving. Um. But yeah. That's pretty good, man. I think you have a career now. I don't know. I just can't. Who am I? I always used to. I, the who you guys have Hulu? No. You watch Hulu, right? I don't even no. know. I was like the Hulu guy who I always. I just like every time I'd watch Hulu, I'd say this stuff along with him. <laughs> like we're like the following Hulu presentation is brought to you by. You know how uh, the fuck you did it? I don't know. I could do I actually do a lot of voices. So why don't you go into yeah, so like, what I, the I, because yo, you don't just walk into voice you just walk into the it's like hi my name is blah 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 I'm here to talk to you it's not like the uh, <laughs> what the dude from uh what's his name Bing or what's his name from Batman oh uh, which one what, 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 Bane Bing whatever yeah oh, what, yeah you sound like him just I now sound like him oh well it's very convenient <laughs> oh shit <laughs> yo I knew it I heard his voice I knew quite it quite a similarity I knew he had a talent so it's quite great. a similarity and you say just cut my hand over my mouth and I'm Bane how you doing <laughs> oh shit um I don't know if that'll come across over on the mic but that's amazing oh, that's amazing matter. to me it is um wow. tell us who Soulcon is Soulcon is five foot seven and three quarters of pure rapping excellence. Mm. Uh, I I'm actually five eight now. Ever since I started doing yoga, I, I gained like an uh, like a quarter of an inch of spine. Uh, I think because I was always so hunched. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I I, I I I would venture a lot of the people who listen to your podcast first heard about me from battle rap. And that's good. Now, before we get into that, you know, because you know that I want to talk about that, but <sighs> don't disrespect the culture, man. <laughs> don't disrespect the culture. I um, would never disrespect the culture. You, you don't, you don't. You know how many people watch battle rap who have don't give half a shit about hip hop? It's mind blowing. But you don't think battle rap is a culture? You I do. No, it's part of hip hop culture. But it's just said, a separate thing from the music. You now, said it right? wasn't a damn. What did you tell me last time in my house? It's not a sport. You said it's not a sport. That is, it is not a sport, because sports have like fairly discrete criteria for judging, and things that like they have points or like objectives that you can like judge objectively. You know, mm. even even things like figure skating, they have like point systems, and mm-hmm. they'll like give a mm-hmm. numerical rating to it. You mm-hmm. don't have that for battle. I mean, it used to be that in the freestyle era, but you know. So let's go back. So yes. SoCon, let's take I, it back. I, you know, like for the people that don't know, I know G Money doesn't know. SoCon was a, I was a grind time battler. Yeah, but before that, you was before a little, that was a little a, white a boy where in Mississippi, Mississippi. Mississippi? I mean, I what? Where, where were you? Do from I again? sound like I'm from Mississippi? Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I'm just I'm <laughs> fucking with you. Where were you from again? I'm from Los Angeles in the Valley, San Fernando Valley. Down in the valley. Yeah. yeah. That's where I'm from. The Valley Solo. It's uh Birmingham. I, it's Jail. not I'm from I'm from a very different valley. Uh, okay. It is the valley. I actually grew up uh where have you ever seen the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, it's like a white people movie about a shopping mall and teenagers and stuff. Uh Never mind. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm trying to think of another frame of reference. Uh, uh, it's like I don't know. The valley is kind of like the. Um, sometimes I like to say it's it's if L.A. were Manhattan slash Brooklyn, mm-hmm. the valley would be Queens. I feel like that's like a good analog. We from Queens, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think it's like I think that's what it's like. It's so the you most. To say Queens is like nerdy. Nah, I would say Queens is much cooler than the Valley. I mean that, but I'm just trying to figure out like how it fits into L. Like it's, you know, in L. A. Everyone drives everywhere, so you can live in any part of it, and you're still like I, I lived in L. A. County, but the city of L. A. Was not my base. I guess uh, I went to North Hollywood High School. I lived in a place called Woodland Hills, though. It's on the other side of the valley, and what was 
I lived, it's like basically the western edge of the what, county. What did your family do? What were they? My mom was a library clerk, and my dad was a lawyer. Then he was unemployed for a long ass time, and then he was a special ed teacher. Yeah. So he was a lawyer. Yeah. And why did he get unemployed? Did he lose? Because he quit. Oh, he quit. Yeah. He didn't like to. He, he wanted to be a musician again. He was he was a musician, but way back in the day. What was he doing? He he was a uh, he was signed to Capitol Records when he was nineteen, I think. And he was really? like managed by Phil Spector. Yeah, he was gonna be what like the next name? like you won't find him. They dropped his ass at the demo phase. Wow. Basically, he he got dropped along with everybody else. In, who Phil Spector was was managing, and then you know, who anyone who wasn't the Beatles, and then uh, mm-hmm. so it was. But was he a singer? He was a singer, songwriter, guitar dude. He, he was like a uh, like a Bob Dylan type of dude. Where are they now? You still in the valley? I don't know. He's crazy. <laughs> Wait, what <are> you? <laughs> he's oh, crazy. No, my dad's nuts. Wait, hold on. Before we get into that, we don't. <laughs> No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, yeah. flip the script. Yeah, man. yeah. Flip the script, Ocon. You That's don't okay. nothing from us. Yeah. He, so, you remember being in the valley, living yeah. there, Jewish family, right? I get. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's ethnically Jewish, like German Jewish or something like, like that. Ethnically Jew. Jew. Yeah, we're Jew. I mean, yeah, Jew, Jew, I'm Jewish. Jew, yeah. Okay, I don't want to say nothing. I don't great. think it, my family wasn't like very religious. Okay. But culturally and ethnically, yeah, Jewish. Okay. But. So your dad. Was it you? Was he a musician while you was young? He got back into music when I was young, and he was really bad at it. And don't say that, man. He wow. was. He sucked. He was garbage. What do you mean? It's okay. Garbage at what? Singing. He tried to do everything, and he was bad at most of it. Like, what was he good at? <laughs> what's like, What's know. bad in your book? Like, like was it bad because right. he's, he's old? He was too old for it. Like, and I don't mean old, like old, like chronologically old, but just like culturally old. Like, he just wasn't in touch with it. Like, looking back at it, I thought like, oh, it was cool, whatever. But then now I think back to it was like he was like out of touch with everything that was going so on when he, in every when, genre. But he tried to do. It was basically like a, a like a middle aged white guys attempt to do every type of cool thing that but not really getting what made that thing mm. cool just not under you know like i start you know and i i come from uh i i would say this i grew i rap because i grew up with rap my dad did not grow up with rap mm. he tried rapping too like he, my dad like in his like late late 30s early 40s tried rapping it, very bad so wait, very wait, very wait, bad time so it's okay when he quit his job did it put a strain on your family i guess i think i don't remember that well well yeah i mean mom was the only person who worked for like 10 years was that selfish to you oh yeah yeah no 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 i completely oh, they're not together anymore though so like oh they're not yeah, together anymore not for a minute you, you still speak to your mom though oh yeah my mom lives in my building moved her over here it's the best thing I ever did Awesome. But yeah. What about dad? So you don't look like a guy that be not nuts, in touch huh? with dad. I'm not. So come on, you can't just leave us like that. Man. I think a lot of people are not in touch with their dad. Well, why? When did it go astray? Oh, he like left when I was like 13. We got real deep real quick. We were like, "Huh, I'm so kind of a rapper." My dad <laughs> left when I was 13. It was like <laughs> zero to 60. <laughs> it was why did he leave? I, I, what I happened? Know, he's nuts. You can't. You know what? My dad's like actually crazy. Mentally crazy? Yeah, like he's nuts. So you you remember him doing music. Yeah. You remember him doing that. Then one day you come home from school, from middle school, I'm, I'm presuming. Yeah, middle school, yeah. Junior, not middle, yeah. junior high? I went to Walter Reed Middle School, yeah. And you come home and you find out your father is gone. Yes. You didn't see him pack up? You didn't see him leave? No. He was gone. Yes. When did you hear from him again? A couple weeks later. Man, it's been and, a while. And you went to his house? I'm, I'm, I'm nah. I never once been to wherever my dad lives. But you saw him again? Oh, uh, yeah, and like uh, occasionally. Okay. Now, Did when, you care about reaching out to him? And, or uh, was, it, was it a thing where you just... He he was doing, he was kind of crazy where you kind of it was best for the situation. Yeah, it's it's just, one of those things where like over time you real. I mean, man, he went to my wedding. 
you know, we went to the civil wedding that I had in New York. Me and my wife, we got married. How many years ago? Uh, five years ago. Okay, so you were in touch. Yeah, but very sporadically. And just other events in okay. life has made it. All right, difficult. okay, I got it. We don't have to get into he's, that. Yeah, he's, so, he's, so, he's wild. But he came, he, came, he came to your wedding. Yeah, but he he's off. My dad's off. It's weird. It's okay. I feel comfortable saying this stuff because he's old anyway. And was he you know, disrespectful he at your wedding? Did he do stuff that you didn't no, like? No, he just there's other stuff in mind. Okay, now we don't. I don't yeah, want to but he's that. but like you know, it's it's. I think the story of of uh, one bad par- parent is like more common than anything else I know. I know I don't know too many people with both their parents. Okay, you know, for one reason or the other. So. I, at first, I, when I was a kid, I mean, it still bugs me sometimes about stuff about it, but, you know, that was, what, like 19 years ago now, which is kind of a trip. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't, you know, it's... it's, it's well, it does, but you... It affects these people, but me, it's me, just me, like, But mm-hmm. me, me personally, what I'm seeing, I feel it bothers you, but you're just not going to divulge Oh, yeah, that. no, it doesn't. No, it, it, it bugs me. I respect me. it. I respect oh, no, it. There, there's and I'm pretty sure me. your wife, and you had these conversations, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. You guys look amazing together. And I, you Thank know, you. I, you know, and Thank I'm pretty sure. But I can tell, like, you know, I, I, I met you before. We had a two-hour conversations, three-hour conversations. Yeah. I can tell that subject is a little, you know. But I just want to know why you call him crazy. Because if he's not. Is he, if you oh, he's like an occult. Like, he's nuts. But don't say crazy. No, crazy. he's nuts. You have to be you nuts. It's okay. I'm not no, saying you beyond can't say redemption. Because there's really crazy people out there. And, and, and in society. I'm not saying People he's don't like, like you to call people that's not mentally ill, mentally ill. I know. I think he's mentally ill. That's an that's an opinion. No, but if, if okay, because I haven't gotten to like clinically diagnose him. I have to pretty sure he's mentally. My dad probably. <laughs> okay, let's, let's let's move forward. When did you move to New York? When, okay, so you always was part of rap. So yeah, <clears throat> dad left. Yeah. Were you into rap when dad was around? Yeah, I've been okay. around in, in the hip hop since I was like six years old. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So. So before you, I need you to jump to the New York. Six years old. Before before we jump to that, what's like a normal day for you out in 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 the, in the valley? Like Back you know, what, the, oh, in the valley. <laughs> Down, like in like what age? What age? Just um, like I guess junior high school, high school. Like, uh, you, you going know. to? You, you know, I'm sorry, I'm but be, this motherfucking space was a drink of the beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you like it? Do he you like, like he it? like that. Okay. Oh. Uh, Space Ghost, is it because of old school Space Ghost or Space Ghost Coast to Coast Space Ghost Cartoon Space Network? Oh, this guy. Okay. Nice. What's the old school Space Ghost? Like the cartoon, the old one that was, because the, the, cause it was a cartoon Bo- back in the day. Yeah, know. but was it his mask was off? Was that the one? No, he always had the mask on. It's just, it's just that. You he know, was then flying they, and saving Cartoon people. Network took all these old cartoons and made stuff out of them. They made Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. They made Harvey Birdman. They made mm-hmm. they did all these different things with old Hanna Barbera cartoons. Yeah, well, space, he's just weird to me. Uh, he reminds me of Space Ghost, the character from Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I love that show. It's funny as hell. It, 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 exactly, it's he classic. has a unique uniqueness of being funny yeah. in his own way. But yeah, what was the day? Oh like yeah, so a day in the life in the valley. You. uh in, in my experience, I would get up, go to school, be at school, go home, watch TV, uh, hang out with my friends. Sometimes I didn't have a, my I wasn't allowed to have friends at my house basically uh, until mm-hmm. I was like until my dad left. Uh, so um, Real I quick, would say did, I was. Uh, did dad? I know, I'm sorry for. Did, back at the one more time, did yeah. dad leaving you surprise you though? Like, were you one of like? Did, oh yeah, yeah. Did I don't think anyone ever think, Yeah, I don't think anyone ever thinks. I think plenty of people's parents have like a a situation, but they don't. The it doesn't unfold that way. Oh, okay, so that's right, how it, you know. It just it was it was a surprise. It made my life better. To be honest, wow. it, like that, which is crazy. You don't want to have to admit that, but it did. I got my. I got to have friends over. Got to, you know, not go on weird errands and adventures with him. Like he's a weird dude. So, mm. okay, you know. But high school, high school, I was, you know, hanging out places, hanging out at the mall. What's the valley like though? Like what what, what goes on? It's a like, bunch of malls. Bunch of malls. Okay. A bunch of it's a you know. Have you ever watched? You ever watched uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Yeah, a few times. So like. It's it's they're just hanging around places and strip malls 
and stuff. It's not exciting. Okay. It's very boring. Unless you go into the city, unless you go to L, like like L.A. proper. I think it's you know, but gotcha, you gotcha. know, also the valley, just like a lot of other parts of Southern California, it's people just hang out, w- w- chill. When did you pick up the pen? Start writing. Start rapping. Uh, Were you rapping in the valley in school? I was thirteen. I think when I started, I was terrible. I was pretty bad at rapping until I you was like first twenty four or twenty five. Uh, do, I, do I remember my first raps? Mm-mm. I don't, but I probably blocked it out because I thought it was so bad. Hmm. Um, and also it was before my voice changed. So, so you were rapping. What inspired you to rap? Oddly enough, uh, what inspired me to rap was Old Dirty Bastard because not to rap like him, but just because I was like, wow, you could you could do this. You could do any, like, I don't know, just sort of like kind of fucked my head up with the possibilities of hip hop as and, and what you could do stylistically, you know. What was your favorite? What, I mean, do you remember what Old Dirty Bastard did? <sighs> I mean, honestly, the, the, it's ver, cause I, you know, like 36 Chambers came out a little bit early for me. It came out when I was like, I think five years old, maybe. Okay. So, like, I kind of got into it, like, when I was, I got, I got into Wu Tang a little later, like, when I was like 10 or so. And I think it was 12 when I started, when I, like, first started writing raps, then it was like 12. And, 12 or 13 anyway no one cares about that but uh just sort of like listening like because i never thought of like rhyming but like just going through you know wu-tang was like pretty much like ages it, it like took over my brain hmm. through middle school especially and mom let uh, you listen to it oh yeah yeah no problem really yeah okay so now we're 13 writing our raps yeah now, when did it? When did we start recording? I oh, was right. fifteen when I started recording. Now, in, badly in the room <laughs> or at a studio. My friend, uh, one of my best friends in high school, who he was from Queens actually, and then he moved to L.A. Shout out to Queens. Um, yep, he's from Jackson Heights, and Jackson he Heights. basically taught me how to rap better than I had been, but I still sucked. Which is okay. <laughs> I think it's okay to admit. I think it's. There's some people who are like really like what like Nas was what like uh, 19 when he did Elmatic. Mm-hmm. I think Rock Him was like 16 when he wrote Paid in Full or so. It, there's some insane shit like that. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's built for that. I I took a long time to develop as a rapper, probably because I didn't have that much of a hip hop community in the valley. Me. Yeah, not really. I mean, there was like one dope record store called a Basement in Sherman Oaks. That mm-hmm. was a cool place. I was going to ask too, like, what, um, do, what do they play, you know, when, when you're hanging out in the valley or like maybe on the radio or, you know, like. I mean, if you were on, hang- I don't know, like on the radio, I'd listen to uh, 92.3 The Beat, which then became 100.3 The Beat. I listened to Power 106. That was where Big Boy was before. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I listened to, my my biggest, like, radio, I was also Julio G, who was really dope. Um, uh,. Divine Forces radio, but the biggest thing for me, and that, I think it was Fidel who did Divine Forces, um, the biggest thing for me was the wake-up show. And that's mm-hmm. Sway in Tech. So, like, Sway is, you know, Sway's mm-hmm. Sway in the morning, Sway's mm-hmm. universe, mm-hmm. that Sway. He had this show that was and it's still running, um, but it, it goes back a couple decades, wow. um, almost. Oh, yeah, it goes back a couple decades. Um, and he had a show with this dude, uh, King Tech, and... Uh, um, their DJ, well, the dude was their DJ for the longest, was DJ Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is like just the illest show. It was basically like the West Coast Stretch and Bob. Mm. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that is. is Stretch and Bobito? Bobito. You're killing Flex. me, Flip. I don't know what that is. What were you listening to? I was listening to Radio Disney and shit like that. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my mother, kidding. oh, I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm 29. I'll be 30 this year. My mother was letting me listen to Radio You'll Disney. You'll be 30 like, this year? Yeah. When I, you know. T- How are you younger than me? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you know, the God. I'm not saying that despair. You just seem like you're just more, more, uh, ex- just like distinguished in life. So. No, no, let her come. 
But yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Tell us ten. I seem more distinguished in life. Yeah, you seem like you. It's. I mean, you, I mean, you're also like a father, so I think you, that matures you. Yeah. Well, you know, you know. Let's get to the end of the knock the knock through me off. But no, it's all good. I don't know who Boney and Stuggy is, but I'll get to Bobito. Stretchy Bobito. I was listening to Radio Disney. They're Radio like, Disney, we're all ears. Everybody. <laughs> I've never listened yeah. to Radio Disney once in my Rock life. Up. That's what I was listening to. My mother, you know. Oh, my God. And that's, that's, no, no, I'm lying. Crazy. I'm lying. You said 13? 13, 13, uh, uh, 13. Well, no, I mean, I was... Well, no, I started listening to, to rap. That's because my mom would play 92.3 The Beat when I was in elementary school mm-hmm. because she liked the morning show. She thought it was funny. And I just kept listening to the station. And then Gee, I got into that. And MTV was also a big thing. Well, like, right. MTV right. was a very big deal for me. For hip- Like, yo, MTV raps is like a, a huge deal for me. Well, you're you going to start going into the rap. Let's, 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 yo, MTV raps. Yes. So, okay, wait. So you rap it? Did you you didn't start battling yet? No You're rapping, not even close. Not even close. Not nowhere near. When did you record your first CD? Was this after battle rap or before battle rap? My group put out something in two thousand nine, I think. But you were battle rapping right then. Uh not yet. Not j- oh yeah. Well, uh, I can't remember. Everything's a blur. <sighs> Everything before I got my dogs <laughs> is just before, a blur, man. <laughs> the dogs are beautiful. Before I got Hugo, man. it's just yeah. Before you, I got that you puppy, love the do- like you love the dogs. So if you see first somebody- two years of my marriage are a blur before the dogs. So uh, if you see something <laughs> outside happening to an animal, like you, you're one of those people that will talk up and get upset. And- oh yes. Oh well, and if, or if to a person too. Like I'm not. I don't. Yeah, I'm of course. A, I'm just saying. I but, don't you know, sit idly by while while things happen that that, that shouldn't. I don't, so let's get into it. So all right. Yeah. So now, when did you move to New York? I moved why? to New York after college. Okay. So wait, wait. Uh, graduated from high school. Ju- yeah, graduated honors, from high school. No. Just... Well, I was in a gifted program, so it's sort yeah, of I like. Tell, but yeah, I was I at the remember. bottom of the gifted program. Oh well, I, I was I, the only I, kid that graduated without any uh, academic honors in my gifted program. But like, that's like, that's because I was like a shitty kid that just didn't want to do any homework it's like I, and i had like undiagnosed add or not undiagnosed untreated add and i was just kind of it was a mess it was a mess in all high right school. so that's so then you went to college what college you went to went to bard college okay and then that's, that's, all, that's where it's where steely dan went it's where chevy chase went i don't know who none of those people are you know who steely dan is no chevy chase you know chevy chase what's, what's, what's the song you think no he's an actor, he's an actor. Oh. yeah uh who else went there um Chris Claremont, who I don't wrote the X Men for nineteen years, <laughs> not the not the cartoon, the comic book. I don't see you know a bunch of crazy stuff. <sighs> Come on, flip. man, forgive me, please, me please. I don't know about none of this shit. All right, <laughs> all right. I was into like old movies, like I like old movies. As young, I was watching old movies, what do you black mean by and old white movies? movies, like really, like Grease. I like weirdest childhood. Uh, 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 <laughs> Doing. An affair to remember with Cary Grant. Cary it's a beautiful Grant, movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. My, I know. my wife loves movies like like Shout Cary Grant, her. Gregory Peck, and like yeah. uh, Jimmy Stewart. I love Jimmy Stewart. Uh, Humphrey Bogart. Yeah. A White Christmas. I know those type of White things. White Christmas is one of my wife's favorite movies. She's awesome. We watch it every single year now. And you know what? It's I, a Wonderful Life. It's one of my favorite movies. I love It's Wonderful Life. Oh, and she my, had never seen that. My all-time favorite movie is right behind you. Grease with the illest theme Ever. That's the funkiest song in history. The Grease I never, I, I, It's incredible. Funkiest is a word that's kind of a little sketchy to me, but, you know, they, you know, you, you're know, hip-hop, man. Come on, you just turned white on me. So I, I didn't <laughs> say funky. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. And then at, at the age when I was young, I was listening to Funky yeah. Town. Dun, 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 dun. My mother was playing okay. all the crazy shit. Yeah. I saw the sign. That's, uh, that's Your mom play, played you Ace of Bass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that's a very far. And cry I say, from hey, four blonde, four non blondes, blondes. Yeah, yeah, all that. That's what I knew, man. Okay, well, I knew too. I mean, but I my mom grew up in Chicago, so oh, she wouldn't. Chicago. She wouldn't. My mom wouldn't let. I, she doesn't like me telling people this, but she wouldn't let me. Or she didn't. She really discouraged me from listening to music by white people, except for like Woody Guthrie. Uh, cause she only liked. I don't know. She grew up. You know, seeing like Stevie Wonder live, mm. oh. so she wouldn't like. I didn't listen to rock music until like 
late high school, college maybe. Wait, what type of dogs do you have? I have miniature dachshunds. Miniature dachshunds. Long haired miniature dachshunds. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Well, now let's. So you, what made you come to New York? I a girl? Were you rap, chasing somebody? No, no. You wanted to rap, so one day you got a ticket and you just flew to New York. No, I went to college in upstate New York, and my sister lived in Brooklyn already, and I would just go. And she, well, she went to school in New York City. She went to uh, Columbia, and so I would visit her. And when I was in college, I'd visit, you know, her after she'd already graduated. And I don't know. I just love the city. I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to drive. I didn't want to just like. I didn't want to like a slow pace of life. Like California is very slow. It's it may not be as slow as like Kansas, but California is Watch like yourself. incredible. Wichita. Wichita is a dope. Place. I've been to, I've been to Kansas. I don't speak from a lack of experience. Okay, I know I know things. Okay. I've been to forty seven mm-hmm. states. Hmm. So why? <laughs> I was a roadie for a little bit. I've done shows in a lot of different places. You know. It's, well, yeah, we can get so yeah now. Your knowledge for hip hop is amazing. It, it, to me, I appreciate Stop that. Battle rap, the battle rap that. play. Okay, how did you get involved with battle rap? Well, first, I mean, you, before okay, that, yeah, even yeah. I started working at Fat Beats. Uh, you told me about that, which was on a record Six store. Ab- yeah, it was like it was a great he, legendary more, record. Even store. I told you before, I didn't well, hear about it. Oh, yeah, that kills me. Well, I guess this. I didn't hear about Fat Beats. Do you know about Fat Beats? Oh man, never been there before. But yeah, I've, I've heard about it. They're closed yeah, now, I and, and that's what's heartbreaking. There's so many people who knew about it but didn't mm. go. I mean, it's you know, it's it's you know, I, I was part Fabulous? of like the last generation. No, he was there way before me. He was there. He he was there probably in the late nineties, I think, if not before that. So no, probably late nineties or early. Yeah. So you worked at Fat Beast while living in Brooklyn. Yes, and you sold records. Yeah, but that wasn't my. They didn't pay any money because they had like interns. They okay. had two cashiers and like a fleet of interns. What I did for a while professionally was I was a investigator of police misconduct for the city of New York. So people would complain about cops and I would investigate it. And what would be the outcome? Uh, not a whole lot because they don't want anything to happen. It's like a rigged process. So I couldn't keep doing that because it was kind of a sham. A rigged process. So you were part of a rigged system at one point. I tr- I, I tried to do my part, and then I realized you can't do it. I, the, it's important to have something like that, like civilian oversight, but it's, it's, you know, police misconduct is not properly punished in the United States in general, so New York's no exception. Um, but battle rap I got into because I needed a way to build my solo. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to... So can you can you charge this for me, please? Let's go back into it. So you, uh huh. I keep throwing you all these curveballs. You don't know what to do with them. No, 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 no. You, I, I, I can catch them. Trust me. Okay. Um, you. So, <clears throat> you. Yes. Realize that the police complaints that you were submitting to your higher ups, correct, was going nowhere. Yes. Well, Did you I would complain have... about it or get fired. I quit. There's no the complaints don't do anything, so you quit. Yeah, because it's it, there was no m- making. No was there dent. a particular situation that you remember that made you quit? Like, well, this- I mean, also music was going further, and I like kind of had to do that. I mean, like, could I couldn't do both? I was gonna basically like burn myself out at this like sham job, which it is. It's like a. Sh- it was. It's kind of a sham. Is it's it an opinion bit- or a fact? It's a fact that it's a shit. The Civilian Complaint Review Board in New York City is it is a bunch of very smart, talented young people who know more about the law than the police mm-hmm. and investigate them. And basically the police union uh, has made it so nothing can get done because they, they stonewall until evidence goes dry. Uh, they tell cops to pretend that they don't remember anything. Um... And you heard that with your own ears. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also just things that were implausible that they should remember. You know, you people people go to like Iraq and Afghanistan and could tell you what they ate on the the morning of October seventeenth and every detail and you know, granted it's a more of a life and death situation than being a police officer in America, but uh 
you know, the bullshit they'd always tell us is, oh, well, uh, you know, we interact with, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 civilians every year and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, so you forget all the forgettable shit, and then the shit you're getting investigated for should leap out to you. You should remember those things. So there's like this just general, like, blanket policy of we're not going to remember anything when you investigate us. But, like, it was, it was bullshit, unfortunately. It was a shame. But the chair, give it, a it, chair. it paid the bills, you know, for a while. And but I, I it, it's it's something that is is designed to fail. OK, it is. now. And even if you prove that something you have, you have, you have something ready for him. And no, also, okay, okay, okay. even if okay, you okay. prove in that job, even when we prove that the cop did something wrong, it was the police department's uh, like jurisdiction for punishment. Mm -hmm. So they could choose to do nothing. So they could say, yeah, you did this thing, but we're not going to punish you at all. And the worst punishment was like losing vacation days or suspension. The only way they could lose their job is if they, uh, if we could prove that they deliberately lied to us. And that's tough to prove. Okay. Now. So. Quit. You into How you got into battle rap? What did you see? That's why I was actually still battling when I was doing that, which was crazy. I would fly like over the weekend to like the Bay Area, do a battle, come back put on a tie, interview a cop who would pretend that they didn't remember some stuff that happened the month before and then uh, have to disappoint people and tell them that the system doesn't uh, work for them. Wow. So mm -hmm. what was your first battle? Where and whom? Uh, my first battle for like the okay, I still got era. the notes. I still got the notes on my phone. You told me about all yeah, the Yeah, yeah. My first, my first battle battles. for like, like my first battle, rap battle ever because I battled like in high school like in the quad or like I had a couple. But you don't on remember your battle battles. raps? Yeah, because it was freestyle back then. Okay, so what was your okay? What was your first? And the first grind time battles I did were still sort of freestyle, but like so grind it time was the first league stuff. you joined. Yeah. How did they find you? Who found you? My Who friend uh, Chaz Kangas brought me into it. He he knew the dude who was running it then, Jay's Juice, mm -hmm. and recommended me, and I. I don't know. Destroy the dude. For Professor, was, Professor Green. No, Professor Green. <laughs> what? Uh, he's like. First of all, <laughs> serious joke. Different country. So, serious joke. So he lost to Professor Green. <laughs> yeah, well, Professor Green was like the shit then, and that was also like a like kind of like the freestyle era still. So he was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he sounded weird as hell. To be honest, back to, I, my my ears were not yet as open and adapted to <sighs> different like countries battle rap styles and stuff and mm. so to me it just sounded like some like i don't know it sounded like something that like someone was like recites some masterpiece theater shit and it was it was kind of weird but he's he, really dope he was before you oh yeah professor green predates me by several years okay he was so doing now. shit like in 90 probably 98 99 so you go to grind time grind time Who's your first battle in grind time? Yellow Rat Bastard, a kid from Woodhaven, Queens. Hmm. I don't like these. I don't. I don't are you sure that was his name? Yes. And he, would, he was. It was uncomfortable because he was Asian, so it was an intentional name on his part. <laughs> Yellow Rat Bastard. It was, it was his. It, that was, so it wasn't because he was a snitch. No. Okay. No. Can you look up Yellow Rat Bastard battle rapper? Um, and who won that battle? I did. There was judging then. So. How many rounds? Three. You, you won two, one, three, zero. I don't know about that. I I did way better than did, he did. Did you get paid? No. What was your second battle? I never got paid for battles. You never <laughs> got like paid for battles. You know, it's like two thousand eight. What was your second battle? Because I, we helped bring something back so people could get paid off of it, basically. That's, that's so you never got paid from a battle? Not from almost Smack, never. Not from nobody? Never from, almost from no one. The only people who ever paid me were Lush One um, in Grind Time and uh, Organic at King of the Dot. Okay, now. That's no slight to Smack, by the way, because back then, when I battled for Smack, I don't, he was definitely doing me the favor. So okay, wait, wait, don't slow yourself. So yeah. you battle for grind time. Yes. How did you get your ranks up in the grind time to go to smack? I just kept battling people, and they noticed because Math saw a battle that I did. I think Math he was at a battle that I did, um, and I 
I embarrassed the dude and Math told Norbs. Norbs passed that word along. It was Norbs? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The one and only and Street you, Star Norbs. And you remember him coming up to you and telling you, okay. Yeah. yeah. Remember, I was like, who's this guy? Why does he talk like that? This is Norbs. And uh, he's a good, a good fellow. When you battled, what was your last battle at Grind Time? Uh, my last battle at Grind Time, well, Grind Time stopped existing uh, a little bit after. Well, no, it exists. That's messed up. I shouldn't say that. It just it was not what it was after a certain point. After Smack came, yeah, yeah. Um, and more King, well, King of the Dot also expanded. Shout out to King of the Dot. Grind Time just kind of, it, it became more regional, just more to Florida. Uh, my last grind time battle was when the hell was that? Um, September 2010, I think. That was versus Madness. You won that also. Yes. What battles did you lose? I lost to a dude named Unorthodox Phrases. That was his name. Uh, and he was from Grind Time, Florida. I lost to him in, in New York. I. That's when I learned that people were writing their stuff. I didn't know that it wasn't freestyle anymore. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, shit. And then I didn't lose another battle. When you start to write. Yeah. So you went to Smack. What was your first Smack battle? Uh, Deacon Frost. Do you, can you give me a round from there? You remember? Come I on. can't give you a round. I Tell could. me something, man. Come on, man. I said some things in that I just... would never say now, though. That's other Why part you of said it. that like, now? Because I did, did have different... I, I'm now a lot more true to my values in everything I do. That's why. There are words that I said then I would not say anymore. You mean curse, curse well, words? Well, like homophobic language and stuff like that. And sexist oh. language. Like, that's stuff. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, uh, profanity's fine. Whatever. Fuck that. That's that's cool. That, that's okay, fine. so you said some homophobic stuff. Yeah, like that stuff I don't say anymore. Just because it's... And even, I respect Even that. though I didn't mean it, like, I... Because I've always been supportive of... You know, the LGBT community and have mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. been like a staunch. Shout out to Sarah Connor. Yeah, absolutely. Always been like a staunch feminist. I still said things because I thought like in the, it's just entertainment. So it didn't matter. But like, that's, I think that's bullshit. I think it's, I think all the way language is used, there's always impact. So, um, but so back then I said stuff, but I basically made fun of Deacon's voice and like his jeans being tight when I actually thought that fucking mattered or something i was wearing like slacks and a blazer though i don't know it was with the hat that was that with the no top that hat? was with fox i wore like a white tuxedo and a white top hat was that your that second battle. battle at smack that was my second and yeah i only had two battles right. smack. Yeah, came out. Oh, 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 <laughs> and actually oh. that white top hat tuxedo thing i had that idea because me and my and my friend were at uh anthony anderson's birthday party and we saw a dude in a white tuxedo Mm. And we just like were like dying, like trying not to laugh out loud. And I was like, "Yo, what if I wore that to a battle?" So, and and, and the Fox battle, you said some things too that you wouldn't say now. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, not good things. Yeah, and I'm like, and I felt bad. That battle was was unfair in the sense. That, I mean, I would have won. You lost that Probably. battle? No, I no, I won. Well, I don't know. There are no judges in the Smack battles, but okay. I think people contend that I won, but. The crowd started booing him within 20 seconds. And they edited that battle, so you can't really see, but they started booing him for just a minute straight. Why? And would not let him rap. I don't know. They just didn't like him. New York didn't didn't like him, which is not... And it, was, so it wasn't fair. That was another thing that kind of, like, messed it up. But, you know, the crowd loved me. I've always been... And I don't... that I appreciate that. I'm grateful for that. And I think anyone... I, I always maintained... In a smack audience, I think I always would have had an unfair advantage. When did you call out conceited? That was um, when was that? I think I initially called him and dumbfounded out because I had just gotten, I'd started like I had my Deacon Frost battle and people went crazy for that, and I was like surprised. So I was like, okay. People love this, and I, it, I was like, well, why don't I call some people out who I think I have a shot at? And I don't know. No one cared. And I was like, okay, fine. If you're not going to battle, I'm just going to keep battling people and get my numbers up, and no one will care who I battle, I hope. 
So some people will still like say like some people would say it frustrated frustrated me then, but now I don't care because it's a stupid thing to care about. Uh, it would frustrate me when people would be like, "Oh, well, Soulcon isn't battling anyone that dope or whatever," and it's like they won't battle me, so I don't really have a choice. And uh, you know, it's it's really just about your set, like how you perform in a battle. Well, Mur- Murder Moo Mur- 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 gave you high praises. I appreciate that. I mean, he's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, he said that uh, that the way you rap, it was hard to beat you. Yeah, and I well. I feel the like though it's kind of like guess. I don't, don't want to. Yeah, well, he, the stuff that it depends because if you if you have been battling a certain way against a certain type of opponent, mm-hmm. if you switch up the whole profile, if you're you you know that's a lot to change, you know all of a sudden you mm-hmm. know like I battled people of all different backgrounds and styles, so I could switch like that. I couldn't. You know, if, if it was like, you know, back in, I would say, when, like in the early King of the Dot days when King of the Dot was really just only in Canada, mm-hmm. like a lot of those dudes, they wouldn't be able to battle someone who wasn't like a white Canadian guy just because that's who they were battling oh, all the saying. time, you know? And so, they, so the guys, it was hard for them to adjust. Yeah, whereas like grind time, when that was like going that, like you had so much more like like crossover in different like uh regions cultures like so uh, people anyone who came in out of that grind time era from grind time i think is probably already gonna have like an advantage of versatility and you were freestyling at the time too for so the you, first you, like you, three or four of them yeah and you, and you were good at freestyling yeah i was so you were good at rebuttaling too that i could still do yeah written freestyle even when, when i just was writing i always like keep alert to something to see if I could rebuttal it. So after you battled two times on Smack, I'm sure they wanted you back. Yes. And I felt bad that I couldn't oblige them in that, but no one, but a, wait. no one that I wanted, wanted to take me up on it. So it's like, what do you mean when they wanted you back? Yeah. Like I wanted, I wanted to battle Averb. That couldn't, that w- then it wasn't something they could make happen. Why um, not? I don't think he wanted to at the time. That's fine. I don't. I don't like back then. I was like when I was like in my mid twenties. I was like, oh, I just want to fucking battle me. What's fucking wrong with everybody? Fucking scared. And now I'm like, oh, we're adults. They can make their own decisions about what they want to do with their entertainment careers. And if they don't give a shit about me, I think I'm not real entitled deal, to real, their attention. Do you, think, do you think it's a white thing? Because real deal have the same issues, but nobody want to battle them. And real deal is nice. It's yeah, but, but you know what though? I mean, I'll say it. And, and I think real deal would. I don't think he would begrudge me in saying this because I consider Trevor a friend and uh, in one of the best battlers, you know, bar none. If he's he was challenging some people that I think it's similar to like the position I was in who were bigger than he is, you're just more famous. And if it doesn't benefit them to other than to prove themselves against someone who's less known and just like you know that doesn't matter you know like in, if if your goal is to just get your numbers up then it doesn't matter you don't have to prove yourself against anybody you just go for whoever is is as famous or slightly more famous than you and whoever they'll pay you to go against you know so if like i when i called out dumbfounded and conceded all that those years ago i at the time i was like well it's, it's so stupid i hate them well, i didn't hate them i was like bitter um because I was basically still like an adolescent, uh, you know, they why why would they care? What would their motivation be? They had everything to lose, especially conceded. So you, you conceded you had like everything to lose by battling me. So you say you would have beat him? I definitely would have beaten conceded then. Mm. I definitely and dumbfounded maybe maybe not. Why you would be? If I battled now, it would be a whole different story too. Because back then I didn't even do like four bar buildups. I would do. Set up punch, set up punch. I didn't care. I just wanted to get the crowd reaction every ten seconds and just give like us something. Give going. us something. Give, give you what? Come on, man! Some bars, man. I want to hear some just rap or or give like us the some bars. So come, come on, man. So come on, man. Stop that shit. Give us some bars. I missed the soul con era, so I, I want to. Oh, so, well, you could. Put, do you have? Do you give have us some bars? You can say, we can't play it on here. You know, I want to. I want to get the live John John. Well, I'm trying. I can't even. I see. I can't remember the stuff I said off. The, in battles. I'm sorry. Really I'm sorry. I just—it's tough to remember. Because when I, I'd write it, 
the night before. You remember often. all these characters on the wall. You got, exactly. I, I know you yeah, know because something. Because I, I <laughs> read those when I was like five. So, you don't remember no raps that you could give us to show us that For you... For battle rap era? Uh, I mean, well, no, because that was like ages ago. It was almost 10 years ago now. And not the negative one. There's nothing you could say, any lines that you say of four balls you could give us. They were all just like making fun of calling people fat and stuff and like i don't even like doing that anymore you changed man look at the range man you I got mean, a whole new game plan <laughs> <laughs> come on soulcon man i mean if people want to hear me rap you go to soulcon.com i have a great oh uh, nah, shameless plug I, I i respect it i mean so you can't give us no you can't give us no four balls eight balls or nothing i just i never just heard you rap, rap. And you I, never heard me rap no and I, I but people know you I I I I just liked you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. What? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I mean, you know, for real. And, and, and I thought that you were just an amazing person. And I, I, I really and I admire, that. I admire your uh, intellect. I felt that you. you know. That's why I wrote you. But I feel that Did you, you also- ever watch my bat? You never watched the battle? Either? No. What? You're like my wife. Uh-huh. My wife's never watched me battle because. Yeah. People should just quote it. that. They should just write on Twitter. Soul Con, you're like my wife at Queen Flip. Oh my God! <laughs> Let's just put that. No, nah, but I heard you was nice though. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I was, you. Yeah, I was, you know. But, so you called. Uh, all right, you wanted to battle Averb, and then when Averb didn't want to battle you. Yeah. You, you got offended. No, I get offended. Well, I was less offended. I mean, Averb, like I, I, he not only was he not only like a big name, but like also one of the best. So like I get and and puts in a lot of work. I admire what Averb does more than almost any battle rapper because he tries to do he 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 adapts to opponents he 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 never just like relies on some like recycled formula you know except i mean there are like obviously certain like repeating motifs and like callbacks like the showtime thing like that's mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm, but that's mm-hmm. intentional um you know i don't I don't know. I think it, he when he didn't want to battle, and also Kid Twist and King of the Dot, he didn't want to battle. And I think it was around the time where I was just like, oh, I'm just tired of looking for a battle. Also, I was supposed, there was another battle that I was supposed to do. The last battle I was supposed to do, it wasn't in, intended to be my last one, but it would have been had it happened, mm. um, was a, a two-on-two with me and Caustic versus Amzilla and PH, RIP to, you know, Pumpkin. Yeah, Pumpkin. Yeah. Um, What's the piece? And, you know, I'm glad that didn't happen, though, actually. Because um, actually, Amzilla got, like, locked up at the time, at that night. Um, but, and then he, like, tried to get out. And then by that time, PH, he got, you know, he didn't think the battle was going to happen. He said, we started drinking and having fun. And then, like, when Amzilla got there, like, PH was kind of drunk. And, like, I was like, that wouldn't be fair. You know, it'd be messed up. Like, mm-hmm. that wouldn't have been fair. And it was really mean. You know, and given that he's no longer with us, I wouldn't have wanted that like to be out in the world, hmm. like a friend so, of mine being like just mercilessly dissed. So after after the smack battles, the two of them, well, how many more battles you had after that? Couple Zero. Uh, well, the smack battles weren't the the Deacon Frost battle happened. Then I had a bunch of battles after that in different leagues. Um, you know, I battled in Grind Time, King of the Dot, Don't Flop in the UK, and uh, I don't know. The, the 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 fox battle was the last thing I did. It was like December two thousand and ten, I think. And why did you quit? You was just tired. The music people too. I was running into too many people in music who were like, just wanted to talk about battling. They didn't want to talk about the music I was doing. I stopped battling. They started talking about the music I was doing more. If it's the only thing that you offer, then that's all they can talk to you about. And also, it's like I discovered that. For every, cause and and you know my numbers have dipped since then music wise because I'm not in like the suggested searches for everything because that's mm-hmm. how YouTube and everything works you know mm-hmm. like you have to keep doing something so I would get more views on my music videos because my name because it would pop up in conjunction with the battles I just had done and but as time passed and I didn't put out new battles you know those numbers decline but those numbers are then based on just pure music fans that's the other thing of the side of it so like you know and also I took too long of a hiatus on some music shit so you know marriage life stuff like that um but i discover even like at the t- at the like when battling was sort of like 
quote unquote helping my music the most that it could at the time, I would only see like a 10% turnout over rate from like a battle video to music videos and music plays. And it's like, that's a hell of a lot of work to do that. Because doing battles is a lot of work, just in terms of time, just getting that mindset, um, traveling. like, And as battling was getting more and more difficult and the battles were getting longer and we had to put more time into them, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, and you also only get to battle one, you know, that's, you know, like I'm putting in hours into this thing and sometimes days into this thing that you perform once True. versus a song that I create and record and can perform over and over and over again. But what I'm saying, and you don't think it's kind of selfish that you quit battle rap like that? That's insane. With all due respect. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't have any. I don't have any respect for people <laughs> that quit. So okay, <laughs> okay. But you know, it's not what I want. I got into battling because I thought it would help promote my music, and then when I saw it could only go so far and take so much more work just to make that promotional mechanism mm -hmm. worth something, it didn't make any sense. And money so wise, it made any sense. You, I could make, you quit on us, man. Well, I never. You know, also the money wasn't there at the time. But then I heard Beasley called you back and offered you money. And you said no. It's because I was making music. I could make just sitting on my ass and letting Spotify streams and YouTube plays and like placements and something like just that can just money can just come in and I don't have to do anything. And that's so much you could passively make money off of music a lot more easily than you can battling. So you didn't really like battling then? I did. I liked the crowd stuff. I liked the crowd reaction. I didn't like the online side of it afterward. I didn't like the the seeing the comments that were just kind of like the the comments actually made me uh, really rethink how I approached language. You know, the, wow. as I was saying about like thing, like homophobic yeah. or sexist mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. like body shaming stuff. I rethought that a lot because of how people talked about it online. And I thought... Were they mad at you or they were on your side? No, they were, like I thought, I was thinking like, oh, they'll be able to separate my battle rap language from like the, like the social attitudes of it and the reality of it. And it's like, no, like these are, a lot of these folks really didn't hold, you know, homophobic or sexist attitudes. And I was just helping to reinforce that even if they didn't say that they probably say like no i don't fucking get influenced by battle rap or anything mm -hmm. it's like everyone's you know when you say something and just let it exist in the world you're saying it's okay if you don't challenge it so i was saying these things mm. and they just like got to hear this person that they really like listening to and they really looked up to saying all this foul shit and then i i contributed so to you it. have a you have a music following you have I a music fan. following yeah, yeah. I have a good i you know i would say all things I have like I still have like thirty thousand Facebook fans and twenty two thousand Twitter followers. Twitter followers, a lot of them also from like political stuff, but because I tweet about politics all day. But yeah, we're gonna talk about um, that. Okay, days. but yeah, like but wait, I, yeah. but wait, but wait, go back to battle rap. Go back quit to on us. Rap. Beasley called you. Yes, you remember you remember getting the call. Yes, and how did the competition like, go? He was like so con. I'm calling you. You come to this match with lyrical prowess and aggression <laughs> and wit. Uh, no one laughs at my Beasley. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's good. Um, Beasley, they, he would just he he a few times has has asked me about coming back, but I think he understands even if he doesn't agree that I'm just not. It's not where I'm at right now. You said that two years and also, ago, I would want man. it to be like in a venue that's smaller than I think they want to do. Like, I'd only want to do a, a bat. Like, I wouldn't want to do it on a stage, either. Mm. Like, I want to do like the pit. You said that two years ago. You still saying the same thing? Yeah, because stuff takes music, time. If your music is being successful, I'm confused. But my music is not that successful yet. What do you want it to do so far? What I do want, you want to just. I want a, a certain. I'll, I'll. I would like to be. Uh, I would like to to be able to make music and be the sole income in my household. That's that's one indicator. Or I would okay. like to be able to uh, tour the country and 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 fill, you know, hundred people venues in every city I go to. You know, hundred people. Yeah, I mean it's my it's real. Like I could do a hundred hundred fifty in a bunch of different cities. Right. 
not not consistently. I would like to be if I'll feel more confident if I could do that every time I go somewhere. Um, because heck, people don't leave their house. And then you'll come back to and then you'll battle again. Yeah, I mean, and, and I know it sounds like a modest goal, but there are people who sell way more. You know, it's, it's not even about selling records anymore. It's about streams. But there are people mm. with like way more exposure than me that can't fill a hundred people venues in every city they go to. But what are your attempts to get into this exposure, so Khan? I got to make more music. First of all, I fell back because life is was crazy, a lot of stuff, and I am still crawling out of that hole and i'm i'm finishing my album and finish doing a lot of different projects with people and hopefully did you lose the love for battle rap i don't know if i had it oh shit wow because no because i i love i mean i loved it as a fan that goes not, that, that goes to my next i had a question i ain't gonna lie anyway. oh, yeah, oh, i ain't gonna lie he, he talked it sounded like uh What's that shit? Uh, Light FM. <laughs> you Light FM. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. This, this one goes out to all the people who lost the love for yo, battle. You gotta rap. listen, man. Yo, this motherfucker. It's soothing. I'm just pause. He it, it, got like a soothing. I don't. Look. I don't know him from nowhere. I don't. You know, I don't watch battle rap. So I, I'm. I'm here today. Like when, when he bring the battle rappers up here, I'm just you know spectating. And mm. I, I jump in when I can, but. You, if you watch me battling as night and day, you're not gonna be able to recognize me. I, I see some of the pictures here. I'm, 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 I'm checking you out here. Well, man. I sounded like a maniac. But um, I, like I said, I don't know you from anywhere. But this voice that you have, and this 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 <laughs> swag, and this intelligence you have for this life, and then the comic stuff, and you got to figure that has to. I'm not saying quit the rap because no, obviously you're here for that. obviously you're here for a reason. You, you wouldn't be here if you if you, if you wasn't a dope. Uh, uh, I could be a guy that just randomly waves his hand on the street and has too much swag. That could be. Uh, so. uh, <laughs> just not, not, not to. Uh, not to. Hold on. Not, that, I, was, I, that I, was reckless. I don't. I I, that Ooh. was reckless. That Shots. was disrespectful and reckless. I don't have as much swag as too much swag. Clearly. You don't, and you know what? He, he he's against his adversaries, <laughs> and he's on parole right now. And, he gonna blow his brains out. Blow his brains out. Oh, his man. own brain. Why does oh. that make you cringe? Stop. <laughs> He's a legend, the, man. That's the point of that whole world of viral media. Cringing is like half of it. He's a legend. So wait, wait, wait. Time out. But I'm just trying to figure out. So you never had the love of a battle rap. I had a love. No, no. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it. But the, I realized that it was for, a, it made me a very, I. It put you in the box. I, and I was also mean as hell. Like I was like <sighs> this. No, but like, you don't. Okay. I'm you gonna go, watch it you later. You walk around on it. How do you? What's your mood like on a given day? I'm mean. What's your outlook? Are you really mean? I am. Well, in what way? I'm just aggravated. I'm, I'm a person that's always aggravated. My mind is everywhere. No, I'm but just... are you like? Are you actively thinking of a way that if someone gets you annoyed or upset, to like cut them down? Diss them? Yes. No. I would think about that twenty four hours them, but a day. I, like to, to leave them alone. Yes. I would think like constantly. And I couldn't get into a, I wasn't able to get into like uh, any sort of tense verbal situation with even friends. Friends couldn't make fun of me, like, because mm-hmm. I would come back with something way, way over the line. So you think well, that came from battle rap? You think yeah. that, that, that was influenced by? I mean, I was like kind of a smart ass, but like that, like, made it way worse. Mm. Way worse. So if you can go back, would you have not? Been a part of the battle rap world, and, 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 just, mean, and just focus on the, the the music career first. Or you know, I it's it's tough to say because I definitely it opened doors, right? And it got my name record. Like I have, I get recognized in most cities I go to by like at least a couple people, right? And that's cool. That's you know that's a great feeling, and I think that I a, a lot of people will never get to experience that that, and I I I um, I'm appreciative for that, but it is it comes with a you know came with a cost, and I, I some folks don't really recognize that, but a lot of them have never done like a lot of, you know people will say to me like man I would just keep doing it if I were to do it forever, yeah, yeah. and it's like mm-hmm. well you don't. But you can't, and you don't. So nice. it's not really I, like I, I, you know, I, I, and I. It made me appreciate more when people decide to not do things that people want them to do. Hmm. So when Beasley, I'm pretty sure Beasley called you, offered you money, and you declined respectfully. Yeah, I mean, just because it's it's short term money too. Like if it's it's not worth being re pigeonholed. It's just not, unfortunately. 
Okay, but you you would one day hope to come back. Yeah, I would. I would do it if I if music got on the footing that I wanted it to or whatever. I would do it, and I just and I hopefully would destroy whoever I went up against. Hmm. Okay, you, you seem pretty over this battle rap. Like, you, well, no, you I sometimes it. I sometimes I, when I watch it, I sometimes think of things where I'm like, ah, oh, you should have said this. Hmm. I mean, over I mean, over in the sense like, of like you know, you, you seem comfortable. You, oh, like Pat, like I'm, I'm yeah, not bothered by not doing. Yeah, it. you seem like okay. I've I've done that. I conquered that. You know, I'm I'm comfortable where I'm at. Whether whether my my uh, jersey hangs in in the battle world. Uh, I feel like I proved myself for that time. It's it's it, you know there are times I'll get the itch for it, but it's only because I just like I get frustrated when whether it's rap politics, you know, it, there was an argument. People, when someone misses an opportunity to really go in for the kill, you know, it kind of drives me nuts. Mm. You know, I also, I, because, because I, I could, st- if I were to battle, I would just talk about how people rap, what they do, just their, their whole, just their whole being. And that's even more, that's more vicious when you get down to it. Um, I, I can't be believe like you're talking about somebody that, that's praised and you just talk about battle rap like that. I hope they, Get mad at you and then you know, me. Yeah, you know you're, you're mean, man. I know I'm. That's it. Well, that's the difficulty. I'm actually very nice, and now it's you are. It's, yeah, well, uh, actually, yeah. Well, I don't know. You tell me. Um, but if I battled, I would deconstruct and like destroy mm. people at their like at. at their, <laughs> but I can't. But that's. But but that would take so much time and, that and energy. That would take eight. Like, I'm I'm in awe of what people do in battle rap. Sometimes I'm I'm. I'm in such awe that when someone doesn't do, like, reach that high standard, I'm like, why don't you fucking show up? Why mm. phone it in? You know, I have the money, I guess, but like, it, why it, you're not Strapped gonna get in. booked again? What's up? Well, that's New Jersey twerk. Somebody who I asked you to watch. He he says I'm strapped in. Exactly, strapped in. <laughs> I don't know the context, so I feel bad just saying. Yeah. It. Like I don't, I'm not mocking it. Uh, I and I think I don't know. We were talking about it. There's so many battle rappers I don't know now. Yeah, you told me about that. That's that hurt. I, we were talking about something off camera, real yes. quick, and we were talking about uh, the Westminster the, Dog Show. No, no. before G Money, because G Money have some questions for you. What I want to do is that I'm going to ask you this question. G Money yeah. has questions. Then I'm going to go into politics, and then we'll close out on that because you. We could talk all day, and your voice is too soothing. Pause. Oh yeah, you don't have hey, to pause it. Yo. You don't have to pause. He's, he's, he's a grown man wow. out here now. Okay. Okay. A, wow. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna think you're a homosexual because you wow. compliment my voice. Wow. He's a very nice. And it, it's just that even you if just, you were, even if you decided to make some big bold life change, I wouldn't judge you. <laughs> I would accept <laughs> you, <laughs> and I'd be like, you know what? You, saw, you know, as long as everyone what loves, what made you change you. though? Was it your wife? Was it something what, in that terms you seen? of like what made you change? No, it? You mean well, I mean, I always had these. I, I mean, my my politics have been the same, and I always wanted people to be. I always wanted like you grew a up like a nigga. Good, no, I, was, I know you get you that, but you grew up like a. Uh, uh. I always <laughs> your wanted, pops left at thirteen. <laughs> I said, "Daddy was I a rolling stone." I always wanted people to be like be, you know, so, accepted and loved in the world. But like, I could be personally like kind of a shithead, and like I just thought be, if it's just a joke, it doesn't matter, or if it's like a battle rap, it doesn't matter. But I think it's it's one thing that uh, when you know you remember one back well maybe you don't know I don't know who you I don't know, know yeah, if people pays you, attention yeah, but good. so there were like a bunch of different when like there was like this wave of awareness surrounding like cyberbullying and bullying in general and like kids who like you know even like killed themselves because they get bullied yes like yes. and uh, you know. Uh, there's one kid in in uh, you know this, this college kid uh, his name is Tyler Clementi. He he killed himself because his he was like uh, there was like a prank his roommate pulled on him uh, because he was gay and like he basically with the shame of it. He, his roommate basically like put his whole life on blast on like a webcam and like you know thinking. Like this climate of homophobia, this climate of hate that exists, and it's like enforced, reinforced by so many different things, including just pop culture and the language we use in it. I didn't want to be a part of of that climate, you know. I didn't want to contribute to that. So like, I could, you know, I I use the other f word a lot in battle rap and F-A-G. Be, yeah, I use okay. it all day, all the time. I even used it like not like 
homophobically in my mind. Mm-hmm. I just used it, you know, like in the Talking. sort of Louis C.K. sense of it, you know, mm-hmm. just saying like, but you can't, it, it keeps that word alive. It keeps the sentiment underlying it alive, you know, and it's, it's, it's not something I have any right to say. It's, you know, and, uh, you know, there's, I'm not like reclaiming it for anyone because I'm a straight guy. So there's nothing I can do. It just sounds hate, mm-hmm. you know, it just ultimately leads back to hate. You know, I don't even say, I don't even say, uh, it sounds weird saying this because most people would think like it's like very like precious for me to say it. I don't even say the B word anymore. But bitch. I don't say that. <clears throat> Why? Because it's sexist. At the end of the day, it's misogynistic. It's underlying. It, if women want to say it, fine. But like, I don't say it. So I don't even say, I know. He's a changed man. Look at the range, man. He got a whole new game plan. But you can say there's other ways to so be mean to people. Us. If you want to be mean, please. there are other ways to be mean. To I mean, people your wife is beautiful, and I, I love you. your relationship. But I, 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 that's not because of her. She says she says shit. I don't say. Good. Okay. Good. She's but way my my. What wife's happened though? What the hell tough. happened to you, man? You had to see something. You just well, Michael Jackson heal the world. Make no, that, that play in your mind. Wasn't Michael. <laughs> it wasn't Michael. Okay, it was I'm just not. Saying. It was, was not it Rodney Michael. King getting beat up. What the hell happened, man? That happened way earlier than me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I was don't, it September 11? No, I just think it's it so, just. I don't know. Okay, Sandy. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It just it was a bunch of things. It was a few years of, of just like <laughs> not wanting to contribute <laughs> to the you know. You're stupid, man. <laughs> yeah, just, was it Hurricane Katrina? Nah, Did you, just, see the, you know, just see, what, just see people. Man? I don't know. Just 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 trying to be you know just trying to to be considerate of 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 how actions affect people and oh just uh, <clears throat> i have to cut you off real quick <clears throat> i respect that though i respect Thanks. the fact you and think like fine. that and i don't expect but everyone it, to do the same thing no 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 but if somebody was to ask me like I, let me tell you me if i if i made a decision right now to stop i would say so con his views and outlooks on life and how he explained it to me Made me rethink using certain words and made me. You see, that's the reason. You can't just wake up one day and it's not Back to the Future. You're not Michael J. Fox, bro. Yeah, I don't get the analogy. I just try to be cool, but I'm just saying you get it. Okay. You're saying white, white, yeah, Michael J. Fox. Sure, you, not you, a word. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, I get okay, you. good. And he, Larry <laughs> David is my favorite guy from Kirby Enthusiasm. And, um, you know, so I'm just trying to just stick to those type of things. <laughs> Well, I know. It's, Why? Cause, cause, like I would get that frame of reference better, or just like he's just genuinely your favorite. He's just my favorite. He's great. No, I love Kirk. I love Kirk. that guy. You love that show too? Oh, absolutely. You know, you know it's funny. I like never watched it. I never watched it until my wife showed me it. The new I season knew about it, but you know the season, the new season's coming up. Oh yes, I do. Oh, oh yes, Lord, I, do. I love that show. Pretty, I want Larry pretty, David pretty, and pretty Steve good. Carell are the two people I want to meet. Mm, Steve Carell for you, sure. Do you watch Silicon Valley? No. Oh, that shit is funny as hell. We we, we, we 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 jumping off subject. Anyway. Sorry, Murder Mook and Jay Mills also were on Curb Your Enthusiasm. No, <laughs> Murder Mook and hey, Gio, you got ads on the screen. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. oh, oh no, nah, I didn't even keep that. Nah, this, this <laughs> sorry, that's the strike. Come on, we got to get this Christian man here, man. Come nah, on, this is, this is not. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. This is. Uh, Murder Mook, Murder Mook <laughs> and Jay Mills said that they may smack. How in do you like, feel in about like that? a laboratory? Oh wow. Um, no, <laughs> no that was Doctor Yakub who made the white people. What? You know Doctor Yakub, man. Ugh. Who's Doctor Yakub? Oh my god, he, he made white people. Like, he didn't really. I'm well. That's that's. <laughs> this guy knowledge is. Yeah, like, we be, we fucking be here all day. Stop it, man. Stop. Okay. All right. Stop. Well, we'll, be, we'll be here all day. Your did they make smack? Like did they make smack? Um, in in the sense of what they popularized the DVD series. Yes. That's what they said. If I don't agree, me personally, I don't agree. I don't know. Get and and we spoke a little bit about this off off cam, off mic. But I, it's tough because I definitely, being in a different city when I watched those, I was, I watched it to see everything that was going on in, you know, in the East Coast. So it, that that was a, you know, I wouldn't just go right to the battles. That was important, but I didn't just skip right to it. Um, Maybe some other people did. I'm sure they played a big role. Um, do they not work with him? Any? I mean, I know Jay Mills hasn't made in a long time, but does Mook not battle? Will, I mean, will battle he not eyes. battle for, for Smack anymore, ever? 
I mean, yeah, I guess he's working something out, but that's not the point. He said that they made Smack. Smack, which is a cameraman. I don't just, I mean, well, I wasn't there. So I this thing, I can't speak mm. to. They're talking about something where you would have physically had to be there okay. to know. Because he didn't, you know, Smack was not like a, a loquacious person of many words. Like, he, you know, it's kind of like. He was shooting. It's it like it's like a, it's like video journalism, but it's it's just very much letting people do their thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I I don't. So you bought Smack DVDs before? I bought one, one from a record store, and that's it. And which one was that? What about was that? Was that the one with? Was that the Party Arty one? Or was that even on DVD? I don't know. I won and my mom was not happy because she didn't. <laughs> she thought it was a little too like she loved. She was fine with the with rap, but she didn't like. I think she uh, she always liked stuff that was a little more positive. <laughs> she, uh, okay, so it was a little crazy. It's okay. It's fine. But you know, whatever. She she, you know. So, I I, I feel you're, you're basically saying f- that you in, in order for you to comment on Jay Mills, I would have to be there when they're filming it. Really, because okay, you don't so know what the choices he makes behind the camera. If you're not there, you don't know what he's deciding to. The smack was already smack. Like you said, but you, but you were one of the guys that watched the DVDs for other stuff. So you're like interviews, and that's cool. Exactly. So you know you, you could have an objection, but I don't know. Like what? It also depends on what other people. I, I'm one person. You know, I don't, and other people might. For all I know, everyone skipped to the battles, or maybe they. Maybe some people didn't watch the battle the battle all the way through. I, I don't know. I don't want to step on any toes. I'm too nice. <laughs> you want to? You want? You want to hear some? Some? You want to hear him talk some shit? Why are you being white for? <laughs> white people definitely have a monopoly on being nice. If if anything, history has told us Come white on, people man. are the nicest. Okay. Do you money? Yeah. The most merciful, good people. Yes. White. <laughs> yeah, question for my man, because I'm gonna get into politics and then into politics. I mean, I, I had a, you know, because before before the show started, you know, he, he was showing his uh, many many talents and knowledge for just life in general, and um, you know, some stuff. So we we gonna just and I, I would the whole time during the show, also like during the interview, I was looking online and Space Girl sent me a link to a website for some questions, some trivia. So I got a bunch of random different stuff. So we we gonna okay. we gonna go through some questions and see. We gonna test SoCon's knowledge a little bit. Let's on, do it. on a flip the script show, you know what I mean? So, um, hopefully, some of these questions are a little difficult for him. You know what I'm saying? And not too easy. He seems like a real smart uh, type of guy. We're gonna start some easy though. Um, let's start easy. Let's start easy. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. 1996. What was the name of the Busta Rhymes album released that year? Oh my God! Is that um? I'll give you a hint. It's the pause. Oh, the coming. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, you got one. All right, let's go to the phone now. I got the, the phone on the laptop. That. Yeah, jeez. The phone on the laptop, you ready? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Um, what happy day star turned down the turned down the plum film role of Danny Zuko in Greece? Henry Winkler. Wow, this guy's good. All right. Um, yeah, it's the fonts. All right, all Who right. else would it be though? I mean, like, it wouldn't be it Shit, wouldn't be uh, Ron Howard. He probably wouldn't have gotten the or Tom Bosley or, anything, or Paparita. They wouldn't have. Scott, that was too much about. <laughs> oh everything. yeah. All right, let's, let's see. Let's, let's try to find something a little more difficult. Now. Let's go. Encyclopedic. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Of, of what descent is Peter on the TV show Family Guy? Oh shoot, that's actually t- what like eth- is ethnic yeah, eth- eth- background. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Is he Irish? Irish. Yes. But the, okay, because I couldn't remember if there was like something where like they twer- oh, no, no, but I, I forgot if there was like an episode man. where he's like not actually Irish and it like mother, it like I surprised think his him. Came around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's not. All right. Um. All right. Which electric duo did the weekend collaborate with for his song Starboy? I'd be Daft Punk, right? Facts. Damn. All right. Um. Uh, that's too easy. All right. Mm. Uh, find some, find some, pick, pick, pick some, pick some, pick some. Now this, some of this stuff is kind of, kind of easy. Some of them, I'll, I'll read through them. Let me see. Um, 
All right, what what song on Jay Z's album, the Black album, was produced by Eminem? Um, that's is that moment of clarity? What Jesus. the fuck? <laughs> Right. I just feel this pay, is crazy. Paying some attention. I told no, no, you. Does no I'm one to... else pay attention to anything? No, no, no you paid this attention too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold the fuck up. Hold yeah, the fuck up. I'm trying to, that's why, that's why I had the phone and the laptop. I, I, yeah. I, I was over here trying to get prepared, but this, this guy is. He's I was ready. trying to remember if that was. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a very Eminem ish beat. Mm. It's very like. I can't remember what it even sounds like. I, I remember all the remixes of, of the Black album now. Almost more. All right. Um, Kev Brown remix. That's really good. Oh man, gotta, 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 we gotta, we gotta get him to get something. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta catch him on something, man. He, he can't leave here without getting a wrong answer. I got something right now. You got something? Uh oh. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be so. You're gonna find something that, like no one knows. All right. That's not fair. In which Batman comic does Robin touch a mirror to discover himself? Well, what? <laughs> okay. Well, well, that's weird. That sounds well, that's weird that's in general. That doesn't even sound. That sounds inappropriate. No, I don't. Not judgmentally so. It's but a like, comic. Okay. See, you don't like know a that. number, like an issue number. What? Like no. what? Com? Like what issue? Uh, uh, now mm. we get another question. Nope. I'm getting another question. Because that's that's very specific. That sounded crazy. Like you said, what? Like you mean like issue number seventy five? Or that's kind of tough to remember. Let me see. Man. Oh, man. Everyone's going to be so proud of me back home. The <laughs> like You couldn't get stumped on the podcast. Dang, on, G. They have no, and they have no mm-hmm. damn comic questions. I can't find them. What are you, are you just on like a random trivia site? You're looking at, I got, I got a bunch of stuff loaded up yeah, in the table, man. But I'm trying to find something that, you know, that's not too that's not too easy, but it's not too out of the range of yeah, life be, in well, general. It'd be, you know? it'd be bad if someone who's listening couldn't even appreciate the question. That's that's the thing. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm trying to find that's something that, that that make that makes sense to everybody. Hold on, hold on. Um, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna look around all the things on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Got a Y Clef record. Oh, oh, oh man. Don't talk about those Every time down. I make a run. Oh shit. Girl, you turn around and cry. <laughs> I ask myself why oh why Gone till November that's that's Hillary Clinton's next album. Hey man. What she never come around till election time. Yeah, what the, I got something. You went to Spider Man? I'm into Spider Man. Okay. Got a question. Mm-hmm. I'm into that Spider Man. The Spider Man I'm talking about nineteen ninety five, one to one on the Cartoon Network. No, the one on channel five. You mean Fox? Fox. Yes. Yes. What happened to Lois? Not Lois, Lois Lane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. <laughs> what happened to Mary Jane? What happened, what happened to, to Mary Jane? That's a very broad question. No, I mean, what happened to Mary Jane? At the end. Oh, at the end? Oh, I don't know if I watched the end of it. Because I remember they did Secret Wars. I remember they did Secret Wars. They all went to a different... They went to the Beyonders dimension and all that. Didn't Mary Jane get kidnapped or sunk into some type of warp? You remember that episode when she got sucked into it's like it was like a a device? That cartoon sucked though. <laughs> Let's be real. No, Wasn't the dude who voiced it. It was like the dude who, who was on the Bra- in the Brady Bunch movie. The guy who played Greg in the Brady Bunch movie. <laughs> Man, let's get right. the okay. One more, one more. Let, let's try. Let me, let me try. And it looked ugly. One more joint. Oh, and it had that horrible rock thing, like. <laughs> not too much about life. Fire. All right, which um, which Biggie song is the is uh, all these lyrics from? Oh no, this is making me feel stupid. I'm not <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> you for, you you represent Brooklyn. You know you, Brooklyn. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. All right. This rule is so underrated. Oh, t- uh, ten crack commandments! Jesus Christ! So I right. say rules. It's, it's politics. Get into it. He got it. I'm done with this guy, man. I can't politics. Uh, I I follow your account. I'm sorry. I don't get. I don't. Just tell me. I don't know. We. I don't know. I. What do you mean? Now you don't know. I just I don't know, man. <laughs> it's what very open ended. 
uh, I would like. What do you want to know? I don't know what I want to know. Oh wow, that's really deep then. Politics, what? like, what do you stand for? Why are you so? I'm a I'm a socialist. That's what does a socialist mean? Someone who wants to eradicate, uh, you know, uh, class and inequality. Um, someone who wants to make sure everyone's basic needs are met in society. Um, no one goes hungry. No one goes without shelter. No one goes without adequate medical care. You know, um, those things, you know. So, basically, you know, I know that's not going to happen in my lifetime necessarily, but it's a goal, and to that end, I support political candidates who like promote policies that can help get you there you know so so you're against hillary clinton also again well i mean what i was hope she just fades into the sunset or something but she's the reason that we lost so you know reason who lost democrats i'm still a dumber registered democrat but like i'm very far why to the are left. you mad at hillary clinton because she did you complain when the clinton were doing the stuff to Haiti? Yeah, it was horrible. They're meddling in like several countries and destabilize them and exploit them. It's just a sh- you know. I don't, I don't like the, the Clintons. I don't, know, I don't know what the, I don't like the Clintons. I don't know what none of that straight means. Straight up, destabilize I, and, and the, okay. The start of my bad Clinton story is this: Bill Clinton basically helped ruin the Democratic Party. Um, by like over sex in the by, office? No, no, that, that <laughs> stuff doesn't matter. Bill Clinton helped ruin the Democratic Party by rebranding it as like the as as you know being in favor of or basically trying to outdo the Republicans in a in a more nice sounding way on a lot of different issues, like trying to out Republican Republicans on crime, you know, and like so. A lot of people will say, you know, it, the, the whole party wasn't behind him on all this stuff, but he definitely pulled the party to the right. You know, hmm. he made it more conservative and in very bad ways. Bill Clinton's, you know, a lot. And, and he, he could, you know, a lot of people say, oh, no, the Republicans had control of Congress. That's why it was happening. He didn't have to sign any of that shit. And he signed into law welfare reform, which was the most anti-black, anti-woman policy change in America in decades. It's the reason why welfare has been destroyed as we know it, and okay, wait, wait. So know, he did what with welfare? He signed into law welfare reform, which basically, you know, it gave more authority to the states to set their own standards as mm-hmm. to who qualified for welfare. Mm-hmm. It made it temporary. It made cut off. It wasn't indefinite anymore. Um, and it also made it a work requirement for it. So people would have to work these shitty jobs that would never get them anywhere to get uh, money. Um, and, you know, it just worsened the worst poverty in America. So it actually made poverty worse and longer lasting for millions of you people. So, so how do you feel about uh, basic level income? Oh, universal basic income? I was on how you feel this, about this, it. How do I think about it? I want that. I want that. Just, to wait, time out, time out, time out, time out. So we, we go through shit like this. He just texts that. I don't he he texts the question. Well, no, it's cool. No, no. That's I don't know what that means. So oh, <laughs> but just just really go quick. Just to sorry, just just to finish to tie a bow on that. Okay. So um, you know, Bill Clinton his one of his strongest political assets was Hillary Clinton. And I think she is a very you know, I she's one of the most influential first ladies of all time she redefined what that meant then she parlayed that rightfully so into her senate seat and then the secretary of state she was bad at both of those things in my opinion Mm -hmm. and too conservative and supported horrible things like the war in iraq she supported horrible things like letting you know Wall Street off the hook for doing destructive, terrible things. So what were you supposed to do to Wall Street? Uh, Wall Street you, was a bunch of people. What were you supposed to do to them? Well, the you know after the financial crisis, there should have been a lot more accountability for them. Um, she told them in to their face that they should get to write their own rules, um, but no one knew that that she said stuff like that because she didn't release the transcript of those speeches. Okay. That's one of those things that came out in those leaks. Okay. Uh, when their emails got hacked, um, and I'm sure if people knew that, 
before the primary, she wouldn't have gotten the nomination in the first place. If mm. you if if so Bernie you, Sanders got to run an ad that said Hillary Clinton told Wall Street they should make their own rules, she wouldn't have gotten the nomination. So you like Barack? I was okay with Barack Obama, and then he was a very big letdown. I voted for him twice. Yeah, hold on, hold on, Still. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> He's let hold down. I, I don't on. like presidents, by the way, just hold so you on. know. Like you talking about general. a black president, bro? Yes. Come on, man. I fuck with you, but you're going kind of far. He's the best president since probably Kennedy? FDR. No, nah, he's better than Kennedy. That's Franklin D. Roosevelt? Yeah. Mm. Like, in terms of the overall record, like, all right, LB, LBJ would have been good if he didn't do Vietnam. And he still would have been a racist, but he was at least a racist. Lyndon B. Johnson. He was the vice president under Kennedy and then elected president again. But he was a racist. He was a racist that got basically, for some, you know, for many reasons, supported civil rights. Like, it's a man, so, it was just weird, why, why, but he, he was Why a, was so Barack racist. a big letdown? I, and I, you guys confuse me when you talk about this. Why was Barack Obama a big letdown? Here's why he was a letdown. He was unfortunately... For, and it's okay. There are a couple. It's a complex thing. Because one thing is, Make he, it I think he genuinely thought he could work with the Republicans. He thought that they would be able to like work. He he gave them the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. even though on day one they said we're going to try to destroy this man. So he was very naive for a, a man who was as smart as he is and as savvy as he is. He was being very unrealistic, and he should have taken it on face value that they were going to not help him on anything. Mm -hmm. And he waited so long to be a, like to. They were gonna paint him as everything under the sun to begin with, and he got played, and he got outmaneuvered under Barack Obama. The Democrats lost over a thousand seats in eight years in local, state, and but federal why, why, elections. Why? What did he do wrong? He didn't. Well, he, the Affordable Care Act was good. The problem is, you know, it's basically kind of like you know it expands health care coverage for a lot of people and it, it requires health care companies to cover more but it still doesn't really help the cost for people who didn't qualify for the subsidies which is unfortunate um and it also left it up to the states to to accept medicaid expansions whether you know or if they wanted to or not he needed to be more of a bully honestly and he should have fought for it more and he should have he he like kind of just like he also should have fought the party he let the democratic party like and and more of its conservative members walk all over him which was really not good and that you know right now there's this thing called the public option the affordable care in in, in like in obamacare uh that you know it would have allowed people to buy into a federal uh health care program you know and basically it'd be like you know like this massive government subsidized entity that would be able to negotiate for better rates and everything. Like it basically, it's, it wouldn't be quite as good as like Medicare or something like that or Medicaid necessarily, well, you know, but you, you would have a lower cost government option for healthcare and Democrats, not, I mean, Republicans opposed it anyways, but at the time Democrats controlled Congress and it was some democratic senators that killed that option. And if it weren't for them, Obamacare would have been way stronger. Like Obamacare would have been invincible if this thing called the public option had been approved and and put in the bill. So that's why but, he was a letdown. He didn't stand up. He didn't. Yeah, he didn't stand. Yeah, he true. And you know what? He's one of the most popular presidents in 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 history. He would have had the political clout. But you don't think that he he, he wasn't a bully because he's the first black president. He didn't want to yeah. really kind of overstep. You know, like we we he already got in the door, so it's kind of oh, like. Yeah. Let's not yeah. do too much. Let's just come yeah. in, you know. And, and, and they, and I mean, the first thing I can't, you know, I can't because I don't have to go through that, so I can't imagine what having to think this every time. But I'm sure every aggression equals, it, you know, to to you know, America is angry black man, and they, he mm. didn't want to run afoul of that that sort of narrative and that framing. Right. I get mm. that, mm. but he, I think he also believed in the process, and he believed in America. And he, he kind of believed that there was like this common ground people could, could find. And the answer was like, no, that's not the case. And people just wanted to destroy him and not let him do anything. Um, even the good things that he wanted to do that I really loved. 
you know, and and the Democratic Party got in the way of that too. Like it's a the, we, there are a lot of Democrats who just suck. And they just they're just trash. We, we got we got five more minutes. All right. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> you don't like Trump. I hate Trump. I hate Donald Trump. I would love it. I'm not wishing death upon him because I can't incite violence. But if he died at this very moment, I would have a huge party uh, in front of Trump Tower, um, and I would I would ask Kathy Griffin for that fake Trump head that she had, and I would turn it into a pinata. He's the scum of the earth. Terrible piece of shit. Did you Stump like him between my toes? Yes. Did you like him before yes. when he had Celebrity Apprentice? I never liked him. He's a. F- I don't like people like him. Don't contribute anything to the world. You know, he inherited his money from from his you know, from his he's dad. From Queens. Yeah. Well, he's the the worst person from Queens. Wow, well, we were. He is uh. the opposite. It's like it's like on one extreme you have like, it's crazy that Queens could make both. You know, like Farrell Monch and Donald Trump, <laughs> but different parts of Queens. But, but Donald Trump, I, I, I wish, you know, I wish the Democrats had, had a more uh, competitive candidate. Maybe next time, hopefully next time. Why did he win? Then he won. Fans, he won because Hillary Clinton didn't really campaign in Wisconsin and Michigan. Um, and outside of Pittsburgh or Philadelphia and the suburbs in Pennsylvania. She also lost because of voter suppression is a real thing in a lot of states. And honestly, she didn't give people a reason to come to the polls. She she campaigned on not being Donald Trump, and that wasn't enough. You know, what? if she had campaigned for something, because she had a platform to run on, right. she didn't run on it. Her ads were actually, they did a study of it, her ads were the least issue-oriented ads in decades in a political campaign she just did she didn't run on the issues all the most of the ads were like donald trump's bad i'm you know shame on him we're better than that that's but we're not what 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 makes donald trump a horrible person to you because he wants to ban the muslims well he's on record as saying he uh, gropes women without asking so that's a that's a problem you know that man. You said no, I think, did... oh i'd take him at complete Listen, Come on, he's so trying man. to impress billy bush on access hollywood i think he's like if he really thinks that he has to impress that guy i think he's telling the truth he's that corny that he would be okay, so honestly so talking you, about so you, that so you took that serious yeah absolutely and he's he had rape allegations against him. Thirteen year old. Yeah. So I I kind of and and his wife his ex wife and she recanted because I think of legal pressure. But I think that was probably the case. What did you say? And he, what's up? What did his ex wife said? She said that she that he uh, forced himself on it. You know, and like I think that's that's I believe after that, they were married. I think when they were married. Yeah, no, when they were married. Oh. I think that's I think that's you know, I believe that. You know, and and that's what makes him a horrible person. And one of the things, he's also a racist. He tried to he he put out a page like a you know, he was putting out ads trying to five like the get f- the Central Park Five like yeah, I remember crucified that. and lynched or whatever the fuck. Like he's a, and even to this day he maintains that they were guilty, even though DNA evidence and like like uh, pretty much that whole investigation being blown open wide and and it it you know those detectives who set them up and forced confessions out of them being exposed. All that stuff has has exonerated them, and that asshole still is like or Central Park Five did it. And it's like, you, what's the point of that unless you just and want you to agree see with Kathy Griffin what she did? You don't think it was tasteless? I wouldn't do it myself. I don't give a shit though because it, she, she didn't had do a, anything. What, she, what did she do? Have a head? It was a fucking fake head that was covered in blood. Who cares? People care because she lost her job. He just he ordered a raid. You know, he he oversaw a raid in Yemen that where you know tr- our soldiers were shooting children in the back. I think that's worse than her holding a head of like a mannequin. Or what whatever. do you mean? To, they they killed children? Like they were like ever since Trump took over for Obama. Even though I think Obama was way too like trigger happy with like drones, and you know I think he was too. Uh, war friendly you know i think so what you want us to sit down and talk to these guys were they trying to kill us no i think the war on terror is a complete failure and it should just be dismantled and it it hasn't made us any safer so i just i think we should withdraw from the middle east entirely but that's another thing uh but trump has you know since taking over has really 
completely taken off all the restraints and there are way more civilian casualties and and in in these military uh endeavors lately and it's been really horrible and like just they've been war crimes and kathy griffin held up a mannequin head so i, I don't care she should hold up two mannequin heads all right we gotta we gotta rub it up now yeah so <clears throat> so one, one last thing before we leave Sheesh. um sorry no, 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 you good. Real. So That's the real. Middle East, you think that we should, so then what if they keep Dip. attacking us? What they if, don't, they haven't. There has been no coordinated. They haven't attacked us because no we're over there. But, uh, That's yeah. not true. That's not true because that, they just that's attacked. Like, Look what they did in London. We, we never, I mean, we technically never, if you think about it in terms of supporting Middle Eastern governments that are like tyrannical, we've always been there. We never left. Our troops may not have always been there, but the money has been, and we've been, and and but we've had troops in other countries. We may not have been in Iraq, but we have bases in other parts of the Middle East. Okay, and if anything, I mean, for one thing, ISIS wouldn't exist if we never went to Iraq. Um, Al Qaeda, you know, didn't really depend on Bin Laden being alive or not. Like the way it's built, he him being killed doesn't change anything really. He's replaceable. That's that's how terrorist organizations are are kind of designed. You know, they're they're meant to be cellular, so you could replace someone at a, as soon as they're gone. Um, but you know, every time they say oh, this ISIS associated person attacked the United States, it doesn't mean that ISIS is sending them here or that ISIS is like hitting them up, being like, "All right, here's the plan." It means that a person who agrees with ISIS mm -hmm. shoots up a place. Tries to blow some up, whatever. So what should we and do? And ISIS then? is just like, yeah, that's one of ours. So after what should the fact. we do? Just, just mind our business. Let them do what they do. It's it sucks. It's it's not comfortable, but yeah, it causes less death because we kill way more people with war than we we save here or save there. Okay, on that you know, note, we half a million it. people in Iraq died as a result of that war. Uh, My cousin died also. Yeah, I'm it, with serving. Yeah. Yes. So I'm so, and that wouldn't have happened if we didn't go. You know, it's a, it's not fair. That also, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it hurts. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. like over three thousand troops in the U.S. for you know, and that's not fair. You know, it didn't have to happen. And then no, we out of here. G money, yeah. sign us, sign us out, please. Right. Uh, this has been talking bullshit with Soulcon. No, I don't know. What, how do you want me to send you? Out? Can you can you do a drop for us? Yeah, I can. What do you want me to say? Flip the script. Flip the script. Um, just want to say, do you, is it flip the script? Say your light FM voice. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> wait, is this the light dun, FM voice dun, dun. or is this? Oh, that's NBC. Oh. oh, yeah. But anyway, uh, if you're feeling kind of rough, you're about to get real smooth with Flip the Script on <laughs> Light FM. <laughs> yeah. Um, My man. Thank you for coming out. Uh, would you come up here again? I might. I might. I'll have to check with some people. Okay. We can maybe make it happen. Now, I'm going to talk more politics. Oh, you know. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that gets me all. I, when I'm not ready to talk about it, I get all. No, I'm, I'm just saying like, I, I think that, place. you know, we should dedicate an episode to that, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. I mean, but you know, yeah. But, uh, Every time you say you're gonna do something, even though you, you know, you, you I you, did it this time. You end up getting busy and all that weird <laughs> shit. I'm I not get busy, you do. like Sean Paul. Oh wow, that's not the first time that phrase has been used. So I, that shouldn't be my like go-to reference. But you know. okay, <laughs> you know, flip the script podcast, man. Subscribe, like, comment tonight, two dollar Tuesdays at the Dark Lounge, two two four dash o one Merrick Boulevard. Make sure y'all pull up. All right. Yes. Yeah, man. Flip the script podcast. You know what it is. Oh, crazy show today, man. Shout out to Soulcon. You know, nice, nice meeting you, man. You came through with, with, with a lot of different uh, talents. I don't want to say. I don't want to say that scene. Uh, outlooks on life. Because I wanted to come back up here, and if he and, and if I know him, you know he ain't gonna come back. <laughs> he'll up here he'll be back, man. It'll be back. But yeah, tonight at the Dark Lounge, make sure y'all pull up. Yeah. 224-01 Merrick Boulevard, two out Tuesdays. I'll be in the building. Everybody free before 12. <sighs> all that, all that, all that, all that, all that. Are you coming back up here? Yeah. Now that you're at, listen, when I had to go to your crib, 
nice as it is, lovely neighborhood, that was far as hell. It was. And it's, it's still in the same borough. It felt like I was going to another Just state. Please, please <laughs> don't, don't say well. Let people think I live somewhere else. He lives in Sarasota, Florida. I've been there before, <laughs> actually. That's nice. You have white sands. Yes. And white mans. Pause. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey this is Queens Flip. You are real TV. TV. I'm from oh, Queens. Man. man, shout out to my man SoCon in the building. It was an enlightful interview. I don't know how I'm going to drop clips on this one. Um, <laughs> SoCon talks about politics. <laughs> SoCon talks about battle rap. SoCon talks about life. The Valley. But, um, the Valley. Thanks. But, um, Break you know, out of my leotard. You know, shout out to Too Much Swag and, um, you know, my man Too Much Swag out here in the building. He does. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, fun. Oh, um, yes. Can, can you give us your website, please? Soulcon.com. S O U L K H A N.com. Or just uh, soundcloud.com <laughs> slash soulcon. Oh, Twitter.com slash soulcon. Facebook.com slash soulcon. Instagram. Is I'm, I'm Solcon so because some jerk off kid took my name, and if I ever see him, I'm gonna Instagram his dead body after I kill him. Why you didn't? Wow. Why you didn't just <laughs> ask him for your name? Because he didn't respond to my DM. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, yo, we out of here, man. Yo, oh god, episode thirty five, an he's amazing episode. Dead somewhere, then I really shouldn't have recorded that. Anyway. Yes, you gotta be careful. Oof. Um. Lock your doors. Mm-hmm. Close your windows. Um, open your blinds. Look through your windows. Wear two pairs of underwear. <laughs> two pairs of boxes. No briefs and then boxes. Pause. <laughs> if you and and uh, if you see a guy like Solcon in your lawn, do not shoot him. Like I always say, open the door, and invite him in. There open is that him. epidemic of people shooting unarmed white people. So you know. Uh, Oh, yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Open the door, let him in, find him if he's okay, offer him some tea, and sit down and be prepared for a long ass conversation. Mm-hmm. And then you pull out your gun and show him and let him know. Stand your ground against me. Exactly. <laughs> I'm from Queens for a reason. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Lord. Salute. Why were we Yo, Pope. <laughs>